begin our Palm Sunday celebration with a reading from Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. As the people spread their coats, palm branches on the ground to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so we welcome him into our lives this day. King of glory, king of peace, servant king, reign in our hearts and lives this day and all days, that we might praise your holy name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Words by Christine Sign. Let us enter the city of God today and shout Hosanna to our King. Let us join the walk toward freedom and follow Christ's path to wholeness. Let us let our hearts ache for justice and mercy and weep for peace and freedom. Let us turn our backs on the powers that grasp for control and follow the one who brings life. Let us walk in solidarity with the abandoned and the oppressed and welcome the broken and the sick. Let us trust and hope as God draws near, riding in triumph toward the cross. A reading from Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, God awakens wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. God who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Here ends the reading. And from Philippians, the second chapter. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the reading. Our gospel for Palm Sunday weekend is from Matthew, the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and were following were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth 
and Galilee. Here ends the reading. The whole city was in turmoil. All of us, no matter where we live, know about turmoil and about fear. We're afraid to turn on the news. We're afraid not to turn on the news. We're afraid we'll be quarantined for one more month, two more months. We're really afraid three months or more. We are afraid our hearts will break completely if we can't hug our grandchildren, friends, parents, siblings soon. And we're so afraid of COVID-19. Every one of these fears are very, very real. On the first Palm Sunday, the people gathered on the streets because they were fearful and their future was so uncertain. They were not there because they thought there'd be a parade with lots of candy and famous people. They were there because they were scared and uncertain what would happen next. They came because they needed hope during really dark times. Their country was under Roman rule. As Jesus was riding to Jerusalem from one side of town, the Roman Empire was riding in a procession from the opposite side. Each and every year, the Roman governor of Judea would come from his residence on the coast. He would come to Jerusalem because they were afraid there'd be riots during the Passover, the most explosive of the Jewish festivals. With him came armies and units to help the imperial guards in Jerusalem. These people knew about fear. They knew about not having control of their daily lives. They knew about wondering a future for their own children. And all the while that they were afraid, uncertain, and I think many days felt hopeless, they still needed to eat, care for their children, attend to their parents, pay the bills, and all the other things we have to do each day, even when we are facing a crisis. I can't help but think of places like Haiti, South Africa, Sudan, and Syria, that have lived through times in their history with corrupt governments, violent uprisings, lack of daily resources, free-falling currencies, soaring inflation, and high unemployment. In all of those places, they knew about fear and uncertainty. And yet in those places, they also tried to make the best of each day despite their circumstances, and they waited. Much of this sounds especially familiar in our lives right now, not just in our community, but everywhere in the world. So this weekend, when we remember Palm Sunday, we can relate to being scared and uncertain about our future. We know what it is to yearn for hope in really dark times. The word Hosanna is translated from an Aramaic word, which literally means save, I pray. How many times in the last week or two weeks or three weeks, or maybe even further back, have you said, save, I pray? Help us, God. Help us. Help my family. Help my loved ones. Help our brothers and sisters around the world. Save, I pray. An Orthodox teacher used the phrase glittering sadness to describe Palm Sunday. There is such unbearable beauty that despite what the people lived through, all of their sadness, they still had hope. They still gathered when they heard Jesus was coming to town. And there was so much pain. Jesus is hailed as king and winds up as a political example crucified on the cross. And yet he rode that donkey right into the middle of the corrupt political and religious powers, trusting in God's promises despite how the rest of the week would play out. We continue to celebrate this day because Jesus loves us to the end. It is not the suffering that is redemptive, but the courage to pursue justice in the face of pain and evil. Walter Brueggemann reminds us the Bible doesn't look the other way when it comes to raw human emotions. As much as we would prefer a God who prevents suffering and who prevents COVID-19, 
We find a God who knows and understands suffering and who redeems it by going through it with us. Words by Fiona McDougall. Each triumphal entry holds within it the possibility of crucifixion. In each joy of our lives, we are aware of the possibility of pain. Blowing out the candles of our birthday cake, we realize we're getting older. As we hold a newborn grandchild, our delight is deepened as we ponder how generations come and go. A pang of grief in the middle of a wedding reminds us of those no longer with us. Loading up the moving truck, we leave behind many memories, even as we look forward to settling in our new home. In the richness and complexity of our experience, we remember Jesus, rooted and grounded in love through both triumphal procession and way of sorrow. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, your son entered Jerusalem at an unsettled time, knowing that he was facing uncertainty and danger. We too are facing a time of fear and challenge. As he went before us to complete your astonishing work for our sake, help us now enter Holy Week with the same sacrificial love that has come to us. Give us bold, give us bold and hope-filled words to speak to sustain the weary. Bless the work of scientists, researchers, teachers, pastors, healthcare providers, grocery workers, and all who give tirelessly of themselves through their skills and callings in this time of crisis. Give courage to leaders as they struggle to make necessary decisions for the good of their communities. Drive away the fear and anger that can cause us to turn against one another. Send your saving help to all who suffer. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, keep us in the joyful procession of those who praise and confess Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Before this week ends, the palm branches will be drying on the roadside. The joyful crowd will become an angry mob, and Jesus will replace robes of victory with a crown of thorns. So then, go in the knowledge that whatever comes to you in this week, you are held in the hand of God, hug tight, held close. And may God, the three-in-one, bless you, uphold you, and give you strength for the journey ahead.